So this past week I haven't really been focused on making videos. What I have been focused on is basically just trying to get through the raid. I'm not really enjoying the raid, but obviously I, I do want to get through it. So in this build video I am going to be showing you one of the healing builds that I use. This one's specifically designed for the second boss fight when you are fighting from the control room. As you can see, I am using the Sharpshooter Specialization, and I am using 3-piece Future Initiative. The reason I'm using it is just because I don't have good Marikami and I don't have good Hanayu to pair with the build. If you did have good pieces of Marikami and Hanayu to run with this build, you could get overall about a 7% skill haste and a 10% skill repair increase over your, your Future Initiative. Now the reason that I'm using Sharpshooter it's only for the actual armor kit and that is because I want that burn resistance for 20 seconds whenever I use the armor kit and I'll explain this a little bit more when I get into the build but in the control room you basically get repeatedly set on fire and what this does is it actually makes it difficult to aim healing into the crucible room if you need to buff up a tank so basically what I'm trying to do is keep the fire off me for a little bit longer so I can actually aim a heal on one of the water cannons to basically keep the tanks alive so that they can you know do their job that's it however if you're going to use a build like this for other purposes I would highly recommend a different specialization specifically the survivalist obviously for the crossbow and you can take out heavies you know a little bit faster with that you know you get the the armor kit that actually repairs your allies you get the increased uh, outgoing healing you know and you get the mender seeker if you want to use that uh, that'll be an actually a different build but th there are better options with the survivalist specialization over the sharpshooter obviously again i am using the sharpshooter for that armor kit to reduce the burn duration so i can aim the healing that is the reason i am using it the technician again is also another better option for different situations you get the healing bonus you know you get the you get the skill tier so you can increase your armor there, there's other options okay so you can use other options like I said I'm using the sharpshooter for the armor kit to prevent burn now one of my weapons is the mechanical animal it's not really that necessary in this specific area but my main weapon that I will be using is the G36 Enhanced, which gives me the 30% uh, skill repair. And then, of course, my backup, 30% skill repair. And that's basically, I can shoot the boss and get that easily. Now, Future Initiative, like I said, the three-piece is not the best option. But if you have very poorly rolled Marikami and Hanayu, then, of course, having perfect rolled Future Initiative is actually better. Because if you are losing a bunch of stats on your Marikami and Hanayu, then you basically take away the bonuses that you would get from having those pieces on. So if you are lacking in perfectly rolled stuff, don't worry about it. Go with the future initiative. You will end up getting better results. And as you can see, my three future initiative pieces are rolled with skill repair. Now, I, I do use a, a skill haste mod on my mask. Skill haste is pretty important in this build. My backpack is my first piece of Alp Summit, and obviously that's for the skill repair and the skill duration bonus. But I am using Energize on this, so whenever I use a armor kit, I am getting Overcharge. And again, this goes into the specialization where I can reduce that burn time. So basically, whenever I am on fire, I'm not hindered directly from actually being able to heal the tank if needed. Obviously, I still do get burn. It doesn't completely remove it but it will help reduce the amount of burn that I take for a short period of time. My chest piece is a complement to this. I have efficient on there so that I have a chance to not use the med kit, plus it also increases the bonus of the med kit. Now I'm not exactly sure what the resistance that you gain from the med kit is. It seems to be maybe it's about 25% and I think whenever I increase it with 100% I get 50%. That's what it seems like, but I could be wrong on that. I, I haven't exactly been able to test those numbers fully. Now, my glove is very important, BTSU gloves, because whenever I destroy the hive, I do grant overcharge to myself and the entire team. It allows my team to basically regenerate a full reviver hive charge. So, if they've gone down, you know, during any phase, they can get back up easily without having to have somebody run over there to get them. The second thing this does is it basically, you know, gives me the overcharge so that I can get my hive back really quickly. You know, I can get it back in like 12 seconds or something like that. This means that I can fully heal up in the control room without a second healer. 
Plus, just naturally, for each skill tier that I have, I get 15% hive skill haste. So this means that my skill cooldown on my hive is only one second per charge. Now, of course, if that wasn't exactly your role in the control room, you could easily switch it out on the fly for another piece of future initiative and have a four piece. Now you can see here on my restore hive, I am healing for 350,000 and my refill speed is only one second. Now this one second refill speed is very important. It basically allows me to ration my healing skills appropriately so that I don't have to actually waste skills. If I did not have a, a high skill haste, I would end up running out of hive charges and running out of chem launcher charges and basically we would just wipe. I need to have high skill haste, I need to have this overcharge so that I can refresh my hive fast enough to not run out of chem launcher charges. And the chem launcher charges are basically what I use to keep us alive while my hive is refreshing itself. And because this is usually teamed with an overcharge, my cloud duration is somewhere in the realm of about 12 seconds. So basically, I can just use two charges to get me through till my hive comes back fully and then place the hive down again. Then by the time my hive runs out, I've usually replenished two more pieces of ammo for my chem launcher. So it's basically a cycle. I can rely on my chem launcher to get me through to having a full hive, and I can rely on my hive to keep me from using all of my chem launcher. And then of course I can use my overcharge at various points to refresh my allies and to refresh my hive in an emergency situation where you know, it goes down at an inappropriate time or, you know, something happened and I had to use multiple chem launchers and, you know, I just in a risky situation so I can replenish the whole stock quickly. And that is basically what you need to do. You need to have very precise management of your skills to be able to heal through this solo. If it was, if it was two people healing, that would be fine. But having one person, you need to have a very precise balance of how to do this. The reason that we are doing it like this is that my teammate in the control room is actually running a hazard protection DPS build. This allows him to not be caught on fire, and so he can shoot constantly to basically progress the crucible to you know dump the molten iron on the tank. If we were both running healing builds, then we would constantly be set on fire, and we wouldn't be able to easily progress the crucible, which would mean that we would have to have somebody go in there constantly to shoot the weak points and progress it. Plus, if need be, if the entire team wipes except us, he can basically just DPS the boss by himself. It'll take a little while, but I can heal him constantly while he does it. So, you know, there's a little bit of leeway there and then how we're doing it. As long as I can keep the healing rotation balanced, everything will work out fine. But that's all I wanted to share with you guys for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.